Hello and welcome to another how-to video from Scale War Machines. In our last film we looked at painting figures' faces with a 1 tenth scale bust. In this one we'll do the same but we'll look at painting faces with facial hair or beards. The model used this time is the Young's Miniatures Templar Knight in Jerusalem. It's an excellent moulding from their historic figures range. As usual it's cast in their yellowish resin and we proceed in preparing the kit in the usual fashion. It's basically a case of sanding away all the mould pouring plugs and cleaning up the different parts. Very quickly we assemble the head dry and you can see that beard will be a large part of the painting process. Just a quick note, when you're cutting away mould pouring plugs it's better to score each side of the plug with something like a scalpel and then gently cut it away before sanding with something like a sanding stick. That way you're less likely to damage the actual piece. With everything cleaned up it's time to mount the parts on little wooden sticks, these are cuticle pushers and that will make painting easier. For the priming we use Citadel's Chaos Black Primer. This is made by the Games Workshop or Warhammer brand and it's a very good primer, beds down nicely over detail and provides a durable base for paint finishes to come. Here you can see the silky smooth effect it creates and also you can see how the face comes out. Notice how it's cast as a separate piece that goes into the headscarf. To aid with the painting we created this little contraption, it's just a piece of plastic tube held in a suction vise with 360 degree movement. The first stage then was to use Vallejo Brown Sand from their face painting set and we featured this in other films. This was sprayed on with an Iwata HPCH airbrush. Just do light coats from the top and get an even covering over the face with a bit of the black showing through. Here we're just adding further coats of the same colour. Before reverting to a dark mix, this was a mix of black and German grey and that was sprayed over the beard areas and the shadows to help with the stages to come. You can even see we sprayed the eyebrow areas as well. Here you can see how it looks at this stage. We then retouched a little bit and tidied up with the base mix. With progress looking like this, we're ready for the next stage. For this we used an off-white mix, and the references are below, to pick out the eyes. It doesn't have to be perfect, you just want to get them blocked out in an off-white shade. We then went to a nice brown shade and just very roughly picked out the iris or the coloured part of the eyeball. It doesn't have to be perfect and you'll see that there are multiple stages to come where we fiddle with the eyeball and just try and get it absolutely right. But at this stage we've just picked it out in brown before adding quite a bit of white to the mix and picking out the centre areas for a highlight. As you can see we went in again with the dark mix and continued to adjust everything over multiple stages to get the eyes looking as we want them. Sometimes it helps to define the outer area of the iris with a dark mix and so a slightly darker version of the base colour was applied around the extremity of the iris. before we used black to pick out the pupil at the centre. You can also see the black was used along the top of the eyelid as well. More off-white was mixed, this was used to just tidy everything up and to try and get the eyeball a bit more rounded 
and to create a bit of white space under the eye. Mistakes were made, easy to clean with a bit of water. And really when you're painting eyes it's just a case of just trying to get it as good as you can. It'll never be perfect unless you're an expert figure painter. But once done you can underline with something like very dark brown before doing any further tweaks and trying to get the eye iris completely rounded and looking good. Bit more adjusting with white before putting a fleck or a little tiny pinprick of white in the top right to show a reflection. Because the figure is pretty clearly based on Sean Connery, it's important to get that kind of glint in the eye. But the same would be said for any figure really. Next we start on the flesh part of the face. For this figure we started off with shadows with a sort of dark mix and that was used to block out the area around the eye and put deep shadows in the sort of recesses of the upper part of the face. There'll be a lot of stages to come so you don't have to be super neat at this stage, just get the eyes kind of framed and looking good. We use these two colours to mix up a further dark shade and that was used under the eyebrows and just where the blood capillaries would be for the eye. This is more reddish in tone. You can add a bit more brown and uh, apply it under the eyebrows as well for further shadows or indeed around the rest of the nose and the eye bags and so on. It looks quite stark at this stage but you'll see it'll be blended soon with a flat brush. That's the secret to these paints, you'll see us doing it periodically is just to blend the colour with a flat brush. And here's how it looks at this stage. We can finally move on to the beard. To start with then we paint over what was airbrushed with a very fine brush and a light grey mix and you can paint the eyebrows as well. But what you're trying to do here is just get fine lines or colour strokes around the beard as a sort of highlight and you can let those start in the flesh part so you get kind of fine strokes of paint a bit like strands of hair. We leave the beard and move on to the flesh mid-tones and this is just the next reference in the vehicle face painting set. What we do is we block out the mid-tone areas with this reference. The paint's very thin as always and watered down. Paint around the shadows, just hitting the highlight areas and you can even paint wrinkles and so on at this stage. You'll start to see that by building up multiple layers of this mid-tone everything will be evened out and smoothed out. When this process is repeated over and over again you start to build up a smoother amount of highlighting in those mid-tone areas. You can see through these progress shots that everything gets blended with the flat brush and looks progressively lighter. You can add a bit more of the lighter flesh mix as well into it at this stage but we haven't yet got to the full stark highlights, those all come. Here it is then after multiple applications of the slightly lighter base mix and time to have a go at the beard again. As you can see we've got our grey mix there but white is added this time. Same process, apply and then blend with the flat brush. But 
what you're trying to do is just get nice stark highlights of much lighter grey in amongst the dark. Here you can see how it looks and the paint is quite watery, quite thin. That doesn't really matter, there's plenty more stages to come. We pick out the moustache and then here again you can let the paintbrush start in the flesh part because then it will simulate sort of fine hairs. The eyebrows get the same technique. And then we just continue reworking it with ever lighter mixes. More white is added and it gets ever lighter. We've painted just one side of the face so you can see the difference. Now we repeat the process on the other side of the beard. Same technique. You can put a few brush strokes under the beard, but generally that should remain darker in the kind of base airbrush shade because of the shadow effect. What the small flat brush does in between strokes is it just blends everything and smooths everything out so it's less stark. And there we can see the effect. It's a, a lot easier having the face on a, a flat plane like that. But you can see how it will fit into the headscarf headgear. Now we return to the real highlighting stage, again using the Vallejo face painting set. And as you can see, these are the highlight references. Applied very thin and then blended straight after application. Picking out all the highest relief points. Here are the furrows in the brow, the area under the eye bags, at the top of the cheek. This will be gone over several times and repeated and you can see it in the video but it's the same basic technique thin coat blend with flat brush here's some close-ups of that process in action these shots also show quite nicely the sort of silvery effect of the beard. You can paint the creases and wrinkles around the eye using the highlight shade and just hit the top of the eye bags as well. And here you can see the end result of the face highlighting stage. You'll notice in the palette that we've gone back to the sort of base mix. And that's just used just to blend everything together so the highlights aren't too stark. This is like a glaze applied over the top. You can also use the same mix just to tidy up any of the boundaries around the facial hair. That's looking pretty much complete. We test it in the headgear, in the sort of um, Arabian style headscarf before dry fitting and then gluing permanently. To complete the rest of the head, we start on the headscarf and that's using Vallejo's black and white set. It's designed to help with the, exactly these sort of medieval knights. 
There are a series of greys leading to a progressively lighter grey and you apply those in order as per the set. And this is what you end up with. Hopefully you enjoy that and the beard is convincing. That's the end of the how-to part for the face painting. If you're interested in seeing how we painted the rest of the bus, then let us know in the comments as we can easily make that into a video. This hobby is all about learning different techniques and if you've subscribed to the channel for a while you'll know that we're happy just to show everything we try, including all the mistakes. The Young's Miniatures sculpt is fantastic as always. We're pretty happy with the face and the beard. Let us know what you think in the comments. If you found it helpful, you could give us a Facebook like over on our Facebook page. Or why not subscribe to the channel and click the bell and you'll be notified whenever we release a video. Stay tuned for our next video and see you then. Bye. Subscribe for our latest videos.